Mr. Sidney Anderson has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should rise continually in their place. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clark, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development for her assessment of the impact of the severe flooding across Northern Ireland and what action her department, in conjunction with other departments, is taking to address the growing crisis being faced by families and businesses. Call the Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development. The three storms in December, along with heavy rainfall, have resulted in saturated ground conditions and generally higher than normal levels in locks and watercourses. It is estimated that approximately 30 properties, both private and commercial, have fl experienced flooding. The response to numerous flood events in recent weeks has been a multi-agency approach. This has mostly been coordinated locally through Western, Southern and Eastern EPGs. However, escalation to Level 1 regional coordination was deemed necessary on the 29th and the 30th of December as a result of an amber severe weather warning being issued and again on the 6th to the 8th of January. DART continues to discharge lead government department responsibilities, particularly in terms of providing support and expertise as defined in the framework for coordination of flood and emergencies. We also provided LGD uh, support to regional level one coordination. The main concern at present is the water levels of Upper Loch Erne and Loch Ney. Multi-agency coordination remains on high alert. However, the regional conference calls for now have been discontinued. Staff continue to check grills, monitor water levels and ensure pumps are kept running. In relation to Loch Erne, water levels of Upper Loch Erne are fallen down six centimetres overnight. They peaked just less than um, one metre above the normal winter level and were about 150 millimetres below the 2009 peak. Only one property has flooded as a result of this high water. The road network was suffering significant impact with many minor roads closed and a number of key routes only possible for HGVs. The key routes are, are likely to be open today as the lock levels are continuing to fall. Property has been cut off and there was concern that vulnerable people may need help and from Anna Noma District Council have re-established their emergency number for those who need practical assistance such as the delivery of emergency supplies. Few calls were received as the local community is absolutely very resilient. <coughs> In relation to Loch Ney, it was at a 30 year high at, um, at its peak, was threatening a small number of dwellings and flooded some businesses uh, properties at Kinnego Marina. The Loch Ness water level is starting to fall. It peaked at one metre above the normal winter levels, which is approximately 200 millimetres above the last significant peak in 2009. Some pumping to, um, to stop property flooding has, st has stopped, and others are likely to finish today. Once weather conditions improve, an overall review of the response to the flooding experience in the last two months will be carried out. The weather is forecast to become colder over the next few days, with less rain, and this will allow levels in the loch to reduce further. They will, however, remain high and rivers remain on high alert, and rivers agency will continue to be on that high alert. Uh, myself and ministerial colleagues, Minister McElveen and Minister Durkin, met last week to be reassured that all the agencies on the ground were doing everything that they absolutely should, and we had a very frank discussion with them in Cookstown on Thursday of last week, and the executive is going to meet um, later today to discuss um, the response to flooding also. Mr. Anderson for his supplementary. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker, for, and I uh, thank you for accepting uh, my question this afternoon. And also, thanks to the Minister for attending and for, for her response. Uh, I would also want to pay a tribute uh, at, at this minute of time for the sterling work being done by the River Agency staff and other agencies uh, since Christmas uh, in trying to protect homes and properties uh, at this time. The flooding being experienced at this present time. It's not just happening now. It's been happening, and I'll, I'll, I'll maybe uh, focus more on the Loch Ness issue. Has been happening for a number of years, and it's just not this year. Although we've peaked uh, at uh, one of its highest levels in Loch Ness for 30 years, but you know, um, we need to get something done and done urgently. And uh, uh, that is something that's coming through to me. And I've been out on the ground since shortly Can after Christmas until to yesterday. To so I would like to ask, I would like to ask the minister. Uh, does she accept that there needs to be an urgent assessment? You talk about that of the statutory lock levels, which haven't been looked at since I'm told since 1959, 60 years. Also, can't she tell me is there an opportunity here to make sure that the rivers, especially the river, river band, the mouth going into the lock, can be dredged and those uh, maintenance works carried out, uh, and a lot of those rivers, which the local community tells me is contributing to a lot of the issues here uh, at Loch Ness. Thank you. 
Thank the member for his question, and I absolutely concur with the work that staff have been doing on the ground. They've been working around the clock 24 7 um, from the start of December and trying to protect properties. And I think the fact that um, only 30 properties, albeit very distressing for those people that have, and businesses that have flooded, the fact that we are only experiencing um, 30 properties, I think, is testimony to the work that's been ongoing in terms of um, maintaining water courses all year round. So I really want to put on record my. Um, I suppose thanks to, to all those staff that have been working um, to help people and businesses. In terms of um, the, I suppose to put it in context, the flooding incident that we're dealing with was a result of extreme rainfall. We had um, the Armagh Observatory actually, in terms of um, how far their records go back to 1838, this is the, the heaviest rainfall we've ever seen. It's been the wettest December since records began. So I think uh, we have to remember the context in which we're dealing with um, the flooding scenario. It is extreme um, weather that has led to the flooding. Because we had such a wet um, period, even in advance of, of December, um, lock levels were high and, and lands were already saturated, so that led to um, the, the difficulties which we've seen with quite a significant body of um, land being flooded. But with every flooding incident, what we do is, as the lead department, we will have a review of both the engineering response but also the entire multi-agency response to um, every flooding incident. And certainly as part of that, I think that yes, we can look at and we have to look at in the round the levels of the lock, the different interests that are on the lock, um, whether that be lock or an or lock. Now we can take a look at, at everything. And I think that it's so important that we continue to keep it under review because obviously we are seeing a change in weather pattern. I don't think you can use one flooding incident to suggest that um, it doesn't give you enough evidence to just look at where you need to improve things. But certainly um, as time goes on, I think we're experiencing more and more extreme weather. So we may need to take a fresh look at um, all, all of those things, and that will certainly be considered as part of the review. Dredging is something actually that comes up quite often, and I think, again, just to be very clear, dredging helps whenever we have areas which repeatedly flood, but in instances such as this, where we have extreme weather, dredging wouldn't make any difference to the, the land that we've seen um, experiencing flooding. So um, the dredging and, and, and um, the levels of the lock, the response, we need to look at all those things in the review. But one of the things that was very clear to me, um, certainly last week when we did the joint ministerial meeting, was that the multi-agency approach served the public well and certainly worked very practically and worked very well among all the agencies on the ground. And that's something that's to be commended. Before I call the next speaker, can I remind the minister about the two-minute rule? If the minister feels that it isn't particularly important and needs an extra minute, maybe the minister would ask for such. Call Mr Sean Lynch. And I don't need to outline uh, the major impact of the flooding in Fermanagh to the Minister as she came down to see it for herself, to talk to communities that had been marooned for uh, five weeks. And I want to thank the Minister for doing so. But can I ask the Minister, can she provide any further details on the protection scheme which he int she intends to launch this week? Gurmayagut. Yes. Um the Individual Property Protection Scheme is something that, that I've been designing and working with officials in Rivers Agency for um, the last number of years. And we, we had already planned to, to launch the scheme on Wednesday of this week. It just so happens that it's obviously coincided with um, the latest flooding incident that people are experiencing, particularly the people in, in Fermanagh. Um, it, the scheme itself is going to be an opportunity for um, individuals, householders who want to actually help themselves to make physical changes to their property. And it's actually a very generous scheme because it's going to be up to 90% grant aid, up to a cap of £10,000. So it'll allow people who, where there is no, um, no engineering solution, no um, affordable scheme to protect their properties, it allows us to help people to become more flood resilient in their own right, in their own property. So um, I'm going to be launching that scheme officially on Wednesday and I'll be getting the detail out there. I, I think that we look at it, um, it's something that's it's very much going to be welcome. Where there is no scheme that can help people, a central scheme from Rivers Agency, this is going to be something, as I said, which is quite generous in terms of grant aid that will allow people to, to help and protect their own properties um, where that's possible. Well, Mr Danny Kennedy. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, can I join with others in uh, sympathising with all, all those who have been impacted upon so severely as a consequence of the flooding, including areas of my own constituency uh, and, and neighbouring constituency? And can I also take the opportunity to, to thank all the staff and officials from government departments and agencies in their efforts to provide relief to communities? But can I ask the Minister? Does she think it's either acceptable or fair that home and business owners affected by flooding across England are entitled to some £5,000 each 
whereas in Northern Ireland uh, it's only limited to a uh, 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 £1,000. Uh, and uh, will she uh, give a commitment that she will seek to get this change from within the executive? And, and will she also give a commitment that the support will extend to farmers? I, sir, I thank the member for his question. Um, certainly, um, what we now know is that we have £1.3 million available to the executive to be able to look at um, supporting communities that have been impacted by flooding. And later today, we'll just meet and we'll discuss that. I certainly would have ideas about how that um, allocation of funding could be well spent. Um, I'm quite sure that um, the DRD minister, for example, ha also would have ideas because one of the, the, the major challenges that we've seen over the last um, number of weeks has been the fact that so many um, rural roads had to be cl or were closed and cut people off from um, being able to uh, get to school or, or access doctors or do any of their everyday um, activities. So I think that um, we, we'll certainly have a, a, a conversation about that at the executive um, later today. But for me, I think where we need to be focused on the effort is on the prevention work on preparedness, around helping people to be resilient to, to flooding, helping protect them and guard against flooding as opposed to always looking towards the end game which is the clean up operation after people have been devastated for flooding. So certainly for me I, I think the priority should be on prevention, the priority should be around protection and prioritising um, that, that work but as I said we will have a full discussion about that um, later in the executive meeting today. Myself and the other two ministers um, who have agencies that are responding to flooding had some initial discussions around that last week whenever I convened a meeting in Lockery to, to discuss it. So I think that we can look at all of those things in the round later as part of that overarching discussion. But suffice to say, the £1.3 million um, won't go very far. So how, we need to work out how we can best use that money to make as big an impact as we can to protect people against flooding. Mr William Irwin. And can I say that myself and my colleague uh, Sidney Anderson visited on a number of farms at the weekend, and indeed uh, one particular farm, uh, a pump has been going from New Year's Eve right up to now to keep the water away from the cattle houses. Indeed, one 82-year-old farmer said it's the worst he had ever seen in his lifetime. Given that farmers are aware that there's a very high level of silt in the River Ban where it enters Loch Ney, will the Minister give an assurance that that will be comprehensively looked at? There is a strong feeling that that plays part uh, over the last number of years. Uh, this, uh, as my colleague has said earlier, this, is not, this has been a very high level of flooding this year, but over the last number of years, has been, each year it has been getting higher, and I think it's very important that that is addressed. And the issue of the uh, previous speaker that asked for compensation for farms, I'd appreciate that. Yes, I actually will come back to that. I've admitted that in the last answer. But um, yes, I look, when it comes to. Um, the priority had to be about protecting people and trying to mitigate against the worst effects of it. But certainly as part of the review, we take a look at all um, the levels of the locks. We take a look at the rainfall that, that came down. We look at everything in the round and then also the, the multi-agency response to the incident itself. So certainly as, as part of that review, we will take a look at all, of, of all the things that you've um, set out. In relation to farmers, what I've done is I've asked, it's, because it's still early days in, the, in that we've been prioritising dealing with the, um, the situation as it was developing. What, we've, what I've done is I've tasked officials to go and make an assessment of the actual impact of farmers and then we can take a look at, at that um, in going forward. Um, as I said, the priority had to be for the last number of weeks and so six, eight, eight, six, seven weeks has been about trying to work with people on the ground, but certainly we're, we're in the middle of trying to get an assessment of the impact on farmers. Mr Sean Rogers. Thanks the Minister for answers so far. Minister, we can't prevent flooding, but we can reduce the risk of flooding. I suppose there's really two issues here. We have too much rain, but the second point is, in terms of river maintenance, we have a 20 or 30 year backlog of, of river maintenance. Will you commit to the, the reintroduction of a significant and consistent river maintenance programme? We don't have a, a backlog of 20 years of river maintenance. There's a very strong um, water courses are maintained on, our, on a, a regular basis. And in urban areas, water courses are maintained. Um, every year inspected once a year in rural areas every six years so um, I don't maybe understand where you're coming from just in relation to that point but, um, but as I said earlier whenever it comes to reviewing the situation what we'll take a look at is the levels of the lock because I've heard quite a, a number of people commenting on that the gates weren't open the levels of the lock you know could have been lowered the gates were open for example in Loch Ness from the 5th of December well in, well in or sorry the 10th of um, November well in advance of the December um, rainfall that came and in the urn situation the gates were open from the 16th so all that, that practically could be done on the ground actually was done. Um, 
That being said, you can obviously understand everybody's individual frustration, anybody who's been affected by, by flooding. But as part of their view, we take a look at everything, but there's certainly no 20-year backlog in terms of river maintenance. Mr. Edwin Poots. Speaker. Um, as was raised, raised the, the, the dredging of some of these rivers is an absolutely uh, vital um, to reduce the levels of Loch Ness. It's, it's just unacceptable that this continues to be the case, and that needs to be addressed and addressed urgently. And secondly, um, uh, I know a number of farmers who have had livestock uh, washed away, particularly uh, sheep, um, in the River Lagan Basin. And what compensation um, is she looking at making available to those farmers? Well, as I just said to um, the Chair of the Yard Committee, what we'll do is well, I've asked for an assessment of the impact on farmers and then we'll take a look at um, what supports, if any, um, we decide to bring forward. But we need to get an assessment actually of the situation because we don't have that at this moment in time. And just again to be clear on dredging, dredging wouldn't have helped in this scenario. Dredging is something that um, helps where there's repeated flooding. It does little or nothing to deal with um, the extreme weather that we experienced throughout December. So just let's be very clear on, in relation to dredging. As I said, all these things are taken under review as part of the, the, my department's, as the lead agency, whenever it comes to respond, or dealing with the review, both from an engineering point of view, so that looks at levels of the lock, it looks at dredging, it looks at all the inspection regime, all that, and also then just the actual review of the multi-agency response and, and how that worked. And certainly for me, I would be, um, even, at, even at this stage, be able to say that the multi-agency response certainly worked. Mr. Oliver McMullen. So far. <coughs> now that the water level is going down, the, the, the important thing now is that uh, any claims, insurance claims are dealt with and dealt with quickly. And uh, can, can I have insurance from yourself that you will liaison with the insurance companies such as the, the, the Farmers Union, etc., that, uh, that there's no red tape involved here and, and claims are paid out very quickly to these people who, who need this money to put things back. Thank you. Yes, um, I'm very happy to, to, to do that, to take that on board as an action. Um, it's a helpful suggestion because people who have been flooded, the 30 properties that have been flooded, are obviously quite distressed with the impact that it has on their, on their homes and their businesses. So um, if, I, um, if my rivers agency need to help in terms of providing assessment of, of situations, then we'll obviously be um, up for doing that, and I'll take that on board. Mr Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I would like to put on uh, the record our thanks to all the agencies for their efforts uh, throughout, especially over the, the Christmas and New Year period. Uh, but can the Minister give us an assessment of the effectiveness of the flood line number? I've had experience of having to use that. You dial an 11 digit number and you sit in a queuing system and you get answered by some lady in England. And you explain to her that there's flooding in Hollywood. And you then have to go further to explain that it's not in the USA, it's somewhere in Northern Ireland. The, the priority to date has been actually just the physical work and actually the agencies responding and doing everything they can on the ground. We certainly can, as part of the review, take a look at the, how effective the flood line was. I mean, certainly I hear quite often that the fact that you only have one number to ring now is, is certainly an improvement. But um, the, the, I suppose what you've just identified is not a story that I've heard today, but I'm very happy to take that and incorporate that in as part of the review. Ms. Michaela Boy. Um, I'm sure the Minister also will join with me in congratulating the many um, community uh, uh, reps and elected reps and indeed the Council and Rivers Agency for the sterling work that went on in my own constituency area of Straban and Clary. Um, over the recent floods um, and conscious that the Minister did cite that there is an executive uh, meeting with colleagues later this afternoon but can I ask the Minister what discussions has she had up to now in response to the flooding with her ministerial colleagues? Gormogat. Yeah, um, I think that um, I could absolutely concur with you in relation to the role that councils have played. Obviously councils with um, having the lead in terms of emergency planning worked so well with both local communities and the relevant agencies and certainly for uh, last week when I um, convened the meeting with um, the other two ministers in Cookstown, one of the, the, the strong messages that came from that was that the multi-agency approach certainly works, that it has been successful, that, um, that, that certainly things have, have improved on the ground in terms of communication. So I commend all those partner agencies for working together and for being so effective 
um, right throughout December. Um, the map, the, in relation to um, the executive, as I said, I don't want to preempt what the executive will discuss later, but certainly um, there is some additional funding now available um, to deal with flooding. I have said where I think the money should be um, prioritised and it should be around the prevention work, it should be around protection, it should be around mitigating before um, um, we deal with um, the flooding. So where, where we can protect properties, then we should, um, we should do that. So um, we'll have that discussion later on today and then we will um, obviously take an executive decision on how that funding will be allocated. Well, Mrs. Dolores Kelly. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And I think it would be fair to say that uh, this is not the first flooding incident and the infrastructure review has been ongoing for a number of years. So, there, you know, I, I'm getting quite angry at the responses members are receiving today from the lead minister with responsibility to, uh, uh, for uh, dealing with the flooding incidents. And I've yet to hear from the minister what comfort she uh, is going to give or whether she is going to confirm here today before the House that she will support Minister Durkin's call that the eligibility of funding criteria will be extended uh, to businesses. Businesses, my constituency, that at this moment are having to tell staff that they will be going to have to go to the Dole office because of a failure of this executive to actually respond to an urgent executive meeting request from, er from away last week and from before December to expand the eligibility criteria. There was not three feet of rain that fell over the last I'll week, I'll Minister. I'll Thank the member for her question, and um, I listen with interest to her contribution, her, her short speech. I think that whilst Minister Darkin and, and the SDLP were calling for meetings, others were actually out on the ground doing the work. Others were out on the ground doing the work, and it's very clear that the multi-agency approach has worked. We have been right throughout, and I really do put on record my um, support for those staff that worked right through the holidays to help people to try and protect and mitigate against the worst effects of funding. So whilst others sat in their cosy in their homes over the, ho the holidays, whilst others sat cosy in their, in behind their desks in, in Stormont or wherever else, other ministers were out on the ground actually making sure the work was being done. Well, Mr. Order, the member is an experienced parliamentarian. We do not expect uh, from sedentary position remarks to the minister. Thank you. Historically, our farmers and river agencies engaged in a regular program of dredging. Then came along the EU Water Framework Directive, which in its terms says that rivers must be undisturbed in their natural condition, which means that now to dredge you have to get permission. And if you dredge, that which you dredge is regarded as a controlled waste, which must be disposed of at great expense. Hence, the severe drop-off in dredging across our watercourses. Isn't it patently obvious that that is a contributor to the flooding of rivers uh, 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 and floodplains and the growth of those floodplains? And isn't it time that that was acknowledged and efforts made to reduce the inhibitions of the Water Framework Directive? I think there's a lot of focus on dredging. I mean, I understand um, your point in relation to directives and, and the Water Framework Directive, but I think that um, when it comes to dredging, let's be very clear, in this incident, it wouldn't have made any difference to the flood. And the fact that we had such, uh, I suppose, a poor autumn, as the ground was already saturated, that lock levels were high. Um, I think that, and even the fact that the, the gates were opened, the, lo the levels of the lock were brought way down, far in advance of the actual extreme weather. We would have been in an in a, in a awful worse, a, a, a sort of poor scenario if that, all that work wasn't done. So I think that um, in this instance, what we need to remember is that this was extreme weather. This wasn't about dredging. This wasn't about those factors. But as part of the review, we will take a look at the levels of the lock. We'll take a look at dredging. We'll take a look at the response. We'll take a look at the engineering solutions. We'll take a look at how the infrastructure responded. So we will work with all the multi-agency responders and see if there are improvements that can be made. We will certainly, um, well, I certainly, as the lead minister in the department responsible for taking the lead, will be making that recommendation to my executive colleagues. That concludes this item of business and I ask the members to take their ease while we change the top table.